Well, you said it before, you, you've been a couple of years away from the music, but now back in the music business, the music business has changed. Uh, that means the CD sales are not that high that, that it used to be. Downloading in the internet is the, the next big thing. How are you coping with that? I'm doing okay now. Yeah, I mean, the first you know couple of years when that started really coming into existence and we realized how many people were downloading. I mean, I, I thought it was just a few people, you know, just young kids that, that found out about, you know, how they could find these sites and do it. And then, I, you know, a couple of years later, we find out that everybody's doing it, all ages, everyone that can do it. And, you know, the idea at first was that if you can download it and nobody's telling you you can't do it, it must be okay. You know what I mean? But, you know, it's very hard for people once they've gotten into that mindset of, oh, here's something free. Oh, okay, it says you can download it. I'll just do it. I just, you know, search for this particular song I like. Oh, here's a place I can get it for free. You know, you don't think about it. You don't think that, well, wait a minute. I didn't, I didn't do that with all the other records that I ever liked or wanted, wanted to have. I went to the music store and I bought it, you know. Uh, and of course, you know, it just takes a lot of, uh, of convincing to some people to say, look it, you know, buy, buy the music legitimately. You know, there's, a, there's plenty of sites you can download it and just as quickly as you can illegally, you can do it legally. It's not very much money. You know, help us out here because, uh, you know, the music business has changed. Musicians, I mean, yeah, there's some rich musicians. There's about probably one-tenth of one percent of all the musicians that are trying to do something with, with a career have money. You know, I mean, enough money to, to, you know, to be a star, you know, and buy big houses and cars and stuff. And the rest of us are just out here just slugging it out, you know. And uh, I'm not complaining. I mean, I, I've, I've had a, a great career uh, because I've been able to pay my bills, pay my mortgage. I have a house, you know, and, and I'm not struggling per se. But, uh, but still, you know, I mean, we have to work hard to, to make enough money to, to make things happen because things have changed. <laughs> because things have changed. People are not buying as many records. And, you know, unfortunately, also, there's not as many ticket sales as there used to be for live shows. Not us particularly, but just in general. All, 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 and that goes from the smallest to the smallest band to the very most popular bands. They have to put two and three amazing artists together on one bill on a tour just to, just to hopefully sell enough tickets. So, you know, things have changed. And uh, it would be nice if people understood that, you know, that 99 cents for that one song actually does help in the long run for, for us. It, it, it helps to keep us going. You know? For starting bands, it's very difficult to get gigs. So if you can't play, you can you can grow musically. But it's also an opp opportunity at the internet because the youngsters who uh, don't know anything about music are uh, they have easy access to all kinds of, of stuff. Um, do you notice youngsters picking up your music if you see the crowd and on, uh, on the stage, or is it still the old guys getting older and loving still the Y and T songs from the 80s? Well, yeah. I mean, thankfully, it's both. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's the old fans that have been with us or, or maybe some people that have been with us for only part of our career and found out about us a, a couple of years ago. It doesn't really matter. But, 
yeah, I mean, we've got those, those fans that have always stayed with us. We've got some fairly new fans in the last 15, 20 years, let's say, because we've been around for 36, uh, so I can say that. Um, but now we see a whole lot more young people at the shows. I'd say it started, I started noticing it maybe seven or eight years ago, um, really started noticing it the last two years. And this year in particular, I would say that 20%, maybe 25% of the, of, of the people in attendance were teenagers. You know, I mean, it's a, it's a early 20s, you know, um, amazing. I mean, some of them quite young. I mean, you know, some of them look like they're 13 years old or what, 12 years old or something. And, and some of them came with their parents. They, they found out about the music through their parents, some of them. Some of them just found out by being, you know, a fan of music and, and finding out, oh, you know, let's, did you hear about these guys? And, you know, so, I mean, I, it's encouraging for me because... I mean, I've been signing more autographs for these young kids that are ex really, truly excited to, to meet us, you know, and, and they, and they want to tell us how much they love the music. And I, and I see them singing the songs out there in the crowd, every lyric and everything, and I'm like, yeah, this is great. This is I was down, I was barely making it. She was gone. thinking, well, we see now the real deal, yeah. instead of having a couple of years uh, a tribute band, right. for yeah. instance, well, who knows. But maybe there's a revival going on of the 70s. Or, um, it's very possible. I mean, I, I know that bands from the 70s and the 80s are still, you know, coming out here and still doing what they can as far as touring and so on and so forth. Um, we've been lucky. We've had a career where a lot of people have said, oh, you never got what, you know, your best do. You, 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 you should have been bigger than you are. I understood that. But how I look at it now, and, and I have looked at it for quite so many years, is the fact that we had a career that went like this and went like this, tapered off a little bit, but kind of stayed there and kept going. You know, and, and, and a lot of our friends that were fans of the band, weren't even in a band, and then later they joined some popular band, opened up for us, and then years later we're opening for them because they, they made it huge. They went like this and like this. Okay, so I'm fine with the way we've been, you know, uh, honestly. Um, it would have been lovely to, to be in that next tier where we could play, you know, 10,000 seat arenas on our own. Uh, you know, and we can actually in some markets. But in general, you know, we, we do what most bands have been doing nowadays, which is play, you know, the, the small to large size clubs and, and the small to medium size uh, concert halls. And I am absolutely ha happy with that and more than happy that each year that we come out to Europe and to, and to the UK, our attendance goes up. So that's, that's something to look forward to every year for me. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just... You know, I'm having a great life, that's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> you should. <laughs> if, you, if you have a catalog like Y&T and you have to play a gig, who obviously you're making the set list what what made you choose the songs because you have a vast list right well it's a it's a combination of all of us putting our our uh, you know input into making the set list um phil and i being the the original members you know have been around for so many years we used to make the set list based on how we always did we always try to make it have a certain type of flow start off fast 
and hard and hit them hard and then slow down a little bit, you know, mid, mid tempos and then back up and then get a nice ballad in there and then kick ass all the way to the end. And uh, that was kind of how we always used to think that, that that was the best thing, you know, just from a flow, from, from being in the audience and keeping, you know, sorry, keeping, keeping the flow of the energy going. So with that, of course, comes a very difficult task now. You know, so many records, so many different styles of songs. How are you going to put it all together? Because, you know, you know, probably only 10% of our songs are fast. And, you know, 60, 70% of them are mid-tempo of one sort or another. So, you know, if you want to put a lot of songs from each record in, you're going to have a lot of mid-tempo songs. So, you know, it's a, it's a constant battle of what, what are the right kind of songs? What do we think the fans in this area really want to hear? Of course... There's, there's six or seven or eight songs that are classic songs that we know we have to play every night. You know, we have to play Mean Streak, we have to play Black Tiger, we have to play Forever, we have to play Rescue Me, we have to play I Believe in You. There's, those types of songs need to be in the set. And then beyond that, now we're talking about what do we want to put in there, what is this particular market really, what was the most popular records for them, the best, best songs. And then, of course, now we have a new record, and that makes it tough because we want to play five or six songs from the new record. Well, luckily, we play two to two and a half hours every night, so that, it gives us enough space to do all of that and make it work. But it's, it's tough. Every night, it's a struggle to figure out how we're going to change the set or, or are we going to change it or what, you know. But I also keep every set list in, on, my, on my laptop. So I'll go back uh, tonight after this uh, interview, and I'll look at Uden, 2009. What you did before. You're right. I'm going to say, what did I play? What did we play here last year? Uh, let's, let's make sure we're, we're playing a couple of different classic songs or a couple of different other songs besides the new ones, of course. So. Try to keep it first. Okay, that's, I mean, there's some thinking in it. You mentioned the song, I Believe in You, and uh, my opinion is that the best, blue, uh, best ballads, not particularly blues, are written by people who can play hard rock. What's your opinion on that? Do you have to play your hard rock to, to get the ballad sound, uh, the, the emotion in, the, in, in a song like that? Start up slowly and end fast. Right. Uh, I don't think it's a requirement. I, I think it's more about the... Uh, the singer songwriter you know part portion um how they pull it off you know i mean the tones are one thing but uh but the emotion and the, and and the and the realness of what they're trying to do i think make, makes the biggest difference because i I've, I've heard a lot of uh hard rock ballads that seem too formula to me you know it's like they they know what the right the right formula is and let's just follow that and do it but for us it's more like a means to an end it's like you know, we've got this great melody. Now let's bring it home at the end. Let's let's just give it our heart and soul all the way out. You know. So I mean, I don't know. I I, I think it's more about the the songwriter than it is about whether or not you're a hard rock artist or not. Dave, thank you so far. Uh. <laughs>